Why, in 2016, are we still talking about gender parity in the workplace? It's a fantastic question. It's really frustrating for a lot of people. Um, but having worked in the area of equal opportunity law for a very long time, so I left uni and started in the workforce in the 90s, I think we started out thinking the laws prohibiting discrimination would, would bring about the change that we had hoped for. But in 2016, we know we're not really, we're hopeless on violence against women. We're hopeless on women's economic security, as in women are retiring with half the retirement savings of men. And we're really poor on getting women into leadership roles. And I think what we've learnt over time is, as well as setting the rules, there's really deeply embedded systemic and attitudinal barriers that are preventing women getting through the ranks. And we need to do more than change the laws. We need to change how we think and we need to change how workplaces work. Can you tell us a bit about what those barriers are and how, as organisations, we should be addressing them to break them down? What I've learnt over time is that the attitudinal barriers that are there, that live in all of us, are really deeply embedded views about what women are good at and what men are good at. And that often reflects men are tough and strong and leaders and women are sort of nurturing and collaborative and, you know, cooperative and more a carer. And in the workplace, one sounds more like a leader and the other sounds less like the leader. In our society generally, um, in Australia, for some reason we've stuck really closely to a very traditional model. So even though we think we've moved forward, um, when you really talk to people, there's a really still a really strong view that men are the primary breadwinner and a woman who has a child really should be staying home. And so those stereotypes are there, whether they're conscious or unconscious. Uh, so in practice, every manager and every person in the workplace is affected by those views. So they're the attitudinal barriers. The structural barriers really reflect how workplaces are designed really around those same formulas. There's still a, a strong kind of assumption that a worker works full time with no visible caring responsibilities. And so work is designed that way. So some of the work I've done, particularly in Victoria Police, was really looking very closely at their systems. And right from the start, there were different decisions made for women than men. Women were getting less opportunities for training, promotion, um, acting up. And so as they progressed through their careers, each step, it seemed to be harder and harder for them. So there's barriers in lack of available flexible work, there's barriers in recruitment processes, there's barriers in looking for different things uh, for promotion. Um, they're deeply embedded in our organisations. I don't think they're deliberate or intentional, but we need to peel them back. What actually works in terms of um, raising women into leadership roles? What have you seen being successful? I must admit that gender inequality in the workplace is in almost every workplace. So that um, that's not to be depressed or you know lack optimism. Um, but I think the reality is what actually works is a recognition that there isn't one thing. That this is a deeply embedded you know historic situation. And so the scenarios where change is really happening is one where you get good leadership. The male champions of change is a good model, but there's lots of great women leaders as well. So a really strong message from the top, where you ha secondly have a good understanding of your workplace, so you know the data, because a lot of people don't accept there's a pay gap. But once you do the analysis, there's a pay gap. So you get the data, you really look at what needs to be done. And then actually, the very boring thing about change is it actually, involves change at all these tiny spots through the chain of command. And some of it is just every day changing how you work, like those recruitment panels, like looking at what are your selection criteria. What is the role that men can play in promoting gender parity in the workplace? Because I know a lot of people, a lot of men in particular, you know, don't intend to discriminate. Um, and they might ask themselves, well, what, what can I do? What achievably can I do? 
Yeah, that's a good question too. I think men have a huge role, partly because I don't think gender inequality is a man versus woman problem. It's not a whole lot of mean men yes. setting out to hold down really talented women. I think it is in our society and I think that the benefits will help men as well as women. So as you know, I'm the chair of a male champions of change group and I know um, my experience with them is that they can make a huge difference. Uh, certainly if they're in the CEO role, man or women can make a huge difference because obviously you're holding the levers of power. People care about what you care about. Um, so that's a fantastic place. But actually I'm just as passionate about engaging men all through the organisation. So my observation at that level is um, two fronts. One is I'm hearing lots of men who are saying actually I would like to work differently. I would like to be an engaged parent. I feel really bound up to this idea that I've got to work full time because society says if I'm a real man that's what I'm going to do. So I hear lots of men saying actually I would like there to be a different way of viewing men and women in the workplace. Um, but I also think lots of those men through the organisation, while they haven't personally experienced discrimination, once they understand its impact, I often describe it as like the, one of those magic eye pictures that once you sort of see it, you can't unsee it. And it's the men all through the organisation who are making decisions about promotions and development. And if a broader range of men sort of just think, let me think differently, am I picking the same person? Is there a woman who I could give an opportunity to? Then that would make all the difference. Mm -hmm.